the House of Representatives will please come to order. Good morning, members of the 66th, 26th day of our session, Thursday, March 25th. Please call the roll. Convening roll for the 26th day, Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Andrew. Baker. Banks. Bear. Bear. Blackburn, excused. Nope, Blackburn's here. Brown. Burkhart, excused. Burt. Clawson. Clifford. Connolly. Crago. Duncan. Eklund. Air. Littner. Fortner, Gray, Greer, Allenham, Haroldson, Harshman, Heiner, Henderson, Hunt, Jennings, Kinner, Knapp, Larson Lloyd, excused. Larson Dan. Here. McGuire. Here. Martinez. Here. Nyman. Here. Newsom. Here. Nicholas. Here. Oakley. Here. Obermuller. Here. O'Hearn. Here. Olson. Ottman, Baxton, Provenza, Roscoe, Schwartz, Sherwood, Simpson, Summers, Stiff, Stivar, Sweeney, Walters, Wash it. Western. Wharf. Williams. Wilson. Winter. Ian. Zawanitzer. Mr. Speaker. Here. 57 present, three excused. Thank you. Members, if you'll join. Pastor Veit from the St. Mark's Episcopal Church. Thank you, Ms. <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Speaker. Uh, today I'd like to offer you a, a collect or a prayer for the morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us and for the people of Wyoming, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and inspiring us to take proper action, especially for those in greatest need. We pray this in the name of our one and holy Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Veit. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yes, have a blessed day. Journal Committee Report. Your Journal Committee reports that the Journal of March 24th, 2021 has been read and recommends that it be approved. 
Representatives Harrelson and Provenza. So, so members, if I could have your attention for just a moment, this is uh, something we've not done before um, this session, and I'm going to I'm going to take this as a priv my own personal privilege.
They can all stay standing, Mr. Speaker. They can all stand up. The House will please come to order. Mr. Speaker, privilege of the floor. Yes, Representative O'Hearn, a privilege. Please all the proceed. way from Casper, Wyoming and Mills, Wyoming, the latest, greatest first class city, have Sabrina Kemper, the community development director, Christine Trumbull, the city clerk, and Mike Coleman, the city administrator. They wanted to come down and make sure I was working as hard for you guys as I do back home. So thank you for coming down, gentlemen, ladies. Well, welcome to the house, first class city of Mills, Wyoming. Glad you're here. And he is doing work. Glad you're here to witness some of it. So I hope members, if we did any productive thing today, that last 10 minutes was it. So take care of each other, take care of each other. All right, reading clerk, reports from standing committees. Mr. Speaker, your committee number one judiciary to whom is referred Senate file 19 engrossed, public health emergencies, immunity amendments, respectfully report same back to the house with the recommendation that it do pass with the following amendments. Eyes, representatives Prego, Oakley, Olson, Rodriguez Williams, Washit, Zwanitzer. Noes, Representatives Larson Dan, Provenza, Yin. Representative Olson, Chairman. Mr. Speaker, your committee number four, Education, to whom was referred Senate File 83 engrossed, Gillette College Community College District. Respectful report, same back to the House with the recommendation that it do pass with the following amendments. Eyes, Representatives Andrew, Brown, Connolly, Harshman, Nyman, Newsom, Obermuller, Paxton, Summers. Representative Paxton, Chairman. Mr. Speaker, your committee number seven, corporations, elections, and political subdivisions to whom was referred Senate file 33 engrossed, physicians assistance amendments, respectful reports, same back to the house with the recommendation that it do pass with the following amendments. Eyes, representatives Blackburn, Clawson, Clifford, Duncan, Eyre, Hunt, McGuire, Roscoe Zwanitzer. Representative Zwanitzer, Chairman. We're at that order of, of business of Senate files on first read. The Senate, first Senate file for our consideration is Senate file 111. Senate file 111, sponsored by Senator Anderson. First reading of the bill. School of Energy Resources, budget submittal. Senate file 111 is referred to committee number nine of minerals. Thank you very much. Members, we're on that order of bills on second reading. The first bill for our consideration, Senate file 13. Senate file 13, sponsored by transportation, abandoned vehicles, towing service liens and titles, an act relating to motor vehicle liens. Senate file 13, having been read two separate times, question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Chairman Harshman, did you need something? We can't help you with what you need. <laughs> Next Senate file is 21. Senate file 21, sponsored by judiciary, judicial review of agency actions, permissible venues, an act relating to administrative procedure. Senate file 21, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Here, no objection, so ordered. Next, Senate file 23. Senate file 23, sponsored by Judiciary. Public meetings, executive session for security plans, an act relating to public meetings. Senate file 23, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Here, no objection, so ordered. Next, Senate file 25. Senate file 25, sponsored by Agriculture. 
animal impound proceedings, bond and disposition, an act relating to crimes and offenses. Senate file 25, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Here, no objection is so ordered. Next, Senate file 30. Senate file 30, sponsored by corporations, pandemic response review task force, an act relating to public health. Senate file 30, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Hearing no objection is so ordered. Next, Senate file 35. Senate file 35, sponsored by appropriations, state budget department, an act relating to administration of government. Senate file 35, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read, read a third time? Hearing no objection is so ordered. Next, Senate file for consideration, Senate file 36. Senate file 36, box, sponsored by blockchain, for-profit public benefit corporations, an act relating to corporations. We do have amendments. Chairman Greer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move uh, second reading amendment number one to Senate file 36, ask for your consideration. You know, members, I, uh, everything I said about this bill, I, I still hold true to. It is uh, still Wyoming's um, way of, of being competitive and, and being out on the forefront uh, within this business development uh, realm. Just again, like I said, with our with our trust work, I did express the one concern, which we which we did discuss uh, with the good chairman of um, of judiciary. And so, with that, just the just one little word bothered me, uh, and that's what this amendment does. And it was uh, regarding the purposes which were enumerated. I'm just simply coming in on page three, line six, and striking the word environmental. And that will uh, at least allow me to uh, get a fuller night's sleep. Um, in, in the end, does it preclude that? Probably not, but I just don't want to see it in the statute. Member first time, Representative Stiff for your first time on Mr. the amendment. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to ask for a clarification why we would particularly exclude environmental. And correct me if I'm wrong about this whole bill, but to me, it seems like the idea is that we'll have these what amount to kind of social welfare corporations where it's a for-profit company, but the shareholders, as they're putting their money into the company, they're told, hey, we, the board of directors of this corporation, don't really care that much about you, right? And we have other goals. We want to promote the arts or we want to promote education. And so you'll probably never get a return on your investment. And we're going to create socks out of grass and sell them on the street or something. We're going to do something that we think is really good for the world and we're not going to care about maximizing profit. And it seems to me that so long as full, you know, there's no such thing as a fully disclosed fraud. And so if you tell someone in advance, you're going to take their money and waste it, then people ought to be able to contribute to that. Uh, so why not environmental? I mean, it seems like if they want to do it to have clean streams too, it seems like that's, that's as good a kind of you know, scam as any other. So anyway. I... Other members, first time, Chairman Olson. Yeah, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, uh, you know, I'm on an ambivalent to the amendment, just so everyone's clear on what the amendment does. It really doesn't do anything. Um, the list is, uh, this is a list, if you, if you just go up to line four, page three, we're, in the definition, it says including and then we have a list. Um, so if you read that, basically what it says is you can have your company for any one or more um, public purpose, including the following. And we've provided a, uh, a, a suggestive list, if you will. If you delete this, uh, this type of company could still exist. If you, if you delete the entire list, the company could still exist. Um, I mean, the reality is it's just a suggestive list. Um, and it's not exhaustive. So, um, you know, I guess it's not really a conscious vote, but vote your conscience, but uh, I don't think it, it, it does a whole lot. Thank you, other members, first time, first time, first time, second time, first time, Representative Ottman, first time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just say, um, since we're looking at putting things in statute, there's a well-known uh, law dictionary that says words mean things. So I would be on and for the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member for their first time? First time, second time, second time to the sponsor, Chairman Greer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> so difficult for me to be a nice, gracious person. <laughs> Had a good night's sleep, Mr. Speaker. Felt great this morning. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> just, just, just a real simple little, little amendment here to maybe send a message that bothers me. Uh, served on this committee, trying to support the committee. Um, and uh, so, so th this is legitimately a concern and, um, and, and this will offend a few people and that's fine. Um, in, in, in the world of uh, dealing with environmental regulations and development, especially with the extractive industries and then the delivery with the transmission, transmission lines and pipelines, uh, there is a practice known as sue and settle. Uh, and it's a well-known practice. Uh, and it's uh, nothing more than federal regulation, which creates legal extortion. And what we see is this gets done by nonprofits whose motives are good uh, in, in many cases. And the people that belong to those organizations all have good and good intentions in their heart. And so this will happen and, and they'll stop a project, a multi, sometimes multi-billion dollar project uh, until they're paid off through, through uh, a regulatory judicial, quasi-judicial system. Uh, and then some of it also is in the, in the regular federal court system. And then those funds that they receive go to pay attorneys. I actually never really ever had any problem with that. But, um, but then what's left over from it, uh, only because if you're a nonprofit organization, only um, by, by IRS code, only portions of it can be for use for administrative purposes and the rest has to go for the purpose of the, of the um, nonprofit, right? So they go and they buy open spaces and they keep them there for, for the elk, you know, to our old speaker, resting elk and, and uh, things like that. And with this type of organization, those requirements are gone. So now in that realm, and it happens in the environmental realm, it's just very conceivable. The group of people could get together, set up this uh, for the sole purpose of doing this, but, but under the guise of, of some environmental name. Uh, some good name. And then instead of taking those profits and buying open spaces or guaranteeing public access somewhere or whatever uh, would be very good or helping uh, preserve the habitat of a specific species, those monies could go right into the pockets of the shareholders. And that's what concerns me. So that's, I pulled this out. Um, you know, I'm, I uh, again think uh, Wyoming being competitive and making ourselves welcoming to states and these new business organizations that we do and these new inventive ideas that we do are a really good idea. This is just the one thing that sits in the back of my mind that bothers me. And so, how, how, Mike, how can you be benevolent uh, and uh, just bring a simple amendment that makes you feel good? So, as it was said, vote your conscience. Thank you. Thank you. M members, we are voting on second reading amendment number one, Senate file 36. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. Amendment is adopted. Senate file 36, having been read two separate times, the question is, shall the bill be read a third time? We have another amendment. Representative Hunt, my apologies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No worries. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would move uh, second reading amendment number two to Senate file 36 and would ask for the favorable consideration folks, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, page two, line 20. Uh, at the end of that line, this, this would simply state that, that the uh, efforts and the, the targets and, and the, you know, the mission of an incorporation of, a, of, a, of an entity that chooses to incorporate under this language um, would direct not more than 50% of its efforts toward creating a public benefit. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I, I stand firm in saying that I don't think, I mean, if you want to go start a nonprofit, then go start a nonprofit. But if this, if, if we're going to go forward with this gray area overlap of profit and public benefit, I still believe that if we are going to call shareholders shareholders, and we are still going to have it be the intent that this be a profit-making company, that its primary goal be for profit and for the benefit of its shareholders. And anything beyond that, well, then knock yourself out. But um, I, I just think that we need to keep it between the lines 
and focus on this still being a what we would consider a for-profit corporation, a for-profit company. So on in, uh, in favor of the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Banks for your first time. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, just a good a question for the good uh, representative. How do you define effort and how do you know if they're putting forth more than 50% of that of their effort into whatever that environmental cause is? And is that over the course of the whole corporation? Is it annually? Is it quarterly? Is it monthly? Uh, you know, I think it just opens up some questions about the definitions of what that would be. Uh, uh, Chairman Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just would like to point out a Scrivener's error that can be corrected. Um, on line three, it says 50% of its, that, that's a common error, but the possessive of it does not have an apostrophe. <laughs> Should I repeat myself, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> I'm sorry, Madam Chairman, I was conferring with the majority photo. <laughs> I, oh, you can proceed or did you have a I, I think it looks to me like the chief clerk has it. It's a common error, but there is no apostrophe in the possessive of it. Just a Scrivener's That's error. That's fine. It's a Scrivener's. It, it's um, in order and we'll make that correction. Chair rules it in order. Thank you. My apologies, Madam Chairman. Uh, Chairman Olson. Chairman um, Olson, please. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yeah, I'm on and against this amendment. And I think the good freshman from uh, um, coal country in the southwest corner of the state hit the nail on the head. What does is, what is 50% mean? Does that mean I sent 26 emails driving profit and I sent 26 emails um, towards the public purpose? I spent four hours, I mean, and I spent four hours driving profit and four hours on, and I had this many board meetings. I mean, there's a reason why we didn't nail down a percentage in here, and it's it's not it's not that simple in the business world to divide that out. So, you know that ultimately, you know what is I and I kind of brought some of this discussion in in the um, in the introduction. You know, the end result is you this this takes away power from the stockholders is really what it does because the stockholders have the power to decide when they think the needle's gone too far one direction or the other. And then they bring a lawsuit when they think it's gone too far. So for the purpose that it's unworkable, I would vote down this amendment. But for this, the second, the, the, the real policy consideration here is, do you, wanna, do you wanna tie the hands of those stockholders or do you wanna empower them to decide the needle? And I really think we should rest this in the hands of the stockholders. Every company's gonna be different. Every company's gonna, you know, have different considerations. And I think we don't want to hamstring those. So on and against the amendment. Thank you. Any other member for their first time? Member for their first time. Members first time, second time, second time. To the sponsor, Representative Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and First off, thank you to the good chairwoman of uh, Labor Health for pointing out that I normally would have noticed. But anyway, um, folks, I, I just, I don't want to belabor this, but uh, um, I, I just, I'm still confused as to why we're going forward with this. I get we have other states that have adopted this type of an entity, right? But if, again, if you want to have a, a nonprofit entity, then go create a nonprofit. But I think that I am on the amendment. On and on for the amendment. So, but when it comes to this, hey, members, uh, when someone's testifying, let's try not to interrupt them. Even if you think you're correct, they have the floor. Please proceed, Representative Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, I I don't think that we're putting too strict restrictive of sideboards on the intent of this bill by simply asking that if it's going to still be called a for-profit public benefit corporation, that its primary focus and its primary reason for existence be for profit. And, you know, my guess is that in the vast majority of these cases, what they're going to do is focus primarily on profit. I think 
that would only make sense. And so, um, again, I just don't think that we're going to be restricting anybody's, you know, creativity, any of the, any of the freedom to conduct their business if they see fit by simply asking that if that's what it's going to be called and that's what its intent is to be, is to say that it is going to focus at least 50% of its efforts on the profit making aspect of its existence. So on and for the amendment, thank you. Thank you members, we are voting on second reading amendment number two, Senate file 36. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Chair has no idea. All those in favor, please rise. Thirty-three. The amendment is adopted. Senate File Thirty-six, having been read two separate times, the question is: Shall the bill be read a third time? Hearing no objection, is so ordered. Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House resolve itself into Committee of the Whole. You've heard the majority floor leader's motion. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. What's that? They must have got the wind knocked out of them earlier. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, no? Wow. Representative Washett. Committee of the whole, please come to order. The, the first bill for our consideration will be Senate File 44, Representative Greer, Chairman Greer. The reading clerk will read the bill. Senate File 44 is sponsored by Minerals. Solid Waste Cease and Transfer Program Funding, an act relating to prioritization of multiple solid waste facilities and cease and transfer projects. Mr. Speaker, your committee number nine, <clears throat> Minerals, Business and Economic Development, to whom is referred Senate File 44 engrossed, Solid Waste Cease and Transfer Program Funding, respectfully report same back to the House with the recommendation to do pass with the following amendments. Eyes, Representatives Bear, Burkhart, Duncan, Ayer, Gray, Greer, Heiner, Sherwood, Western. Representative Greer, Chairman. You have heard the reading of the bill. What is your pleasure, Chairman Greer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that when the Committee of the Whole rises recorded, do so with a recommendation that Senate File 44 do pass. I will quickly uh, dispense with the Standing Committee Amendment. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I move st Standing Committee Amendment Number One to Senate File 44. Members, this is simply um, we've heard this a lot, but this is a technical correction. If you turn to page two, um, line 21, uh, what we're doing is just inserting the amendment in 2019. Most of these amendments, are, all of this, uh, is carried within the session laws. It's just appropriate to reference the 2019 amendment as we move forward then to another bill, which is in, ex in essence, another amendment to this, this program. So uh, with that, if there's any questions on it, uh, I'll be more than happy to take them. If not, I'll call for the question, Mr. Chairman. Discussion? Say none. Hearing call for the question. You've heard the motion on the standing committee amendment. Are you ready for the question? 
To any committee amendment, number one on Senate file 44 has been, is, <clears throat> all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Standing committee amendment number one has been adopted. We're back on the bill, Chairman Greer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would uh, very much like to turn over the explanation of Senate File 44 to uh, one of our hardworking members of the Minerals Committee and a distinguished gentleman from House District 18. Representative Pine. Please proceed. Mr. Chair, I bring you Senate File 44 and ask for your favorable consideration. Members of the body, this, is, this uh, bill is mainly procedural and, and essence because it just changes the priority list of the cease and, and transfer uh, uh, program. A small uh, closure was, was requested and added as number 11 on the list from Lingle. And there was one closure that was completed and funded in 2020. That was less than anticipated because of COVID, but it was removed from the list. So those of you that may not be familiar with this program, it was, it was developed in 2013 because of uh, recognition of our unlined solid waste uh, landfills that were creating an environmental concern for us. Uh, what it does for these communities is creates a, a process where they can get state help to, uh, the, with the cease and transfer program it provides cost assistance to uh, cease operating these small unlined solid waste transfer or solid waste facilities and transfer those solid waste to regional lined landfills. Of course, there's issues of, if there are issues of grand, groundwater contamination, it creates more of a concern and cost for closure of some of these unlined landfills. So just to give you an update of the current status and costs of the program, it began with 52 facilities with an appropriation of $96 million. The, currently, the list is down to 19 facilities with $17.8 million remaining in the original appropriation. Those 19 remaining facilities include seven transfer stations and 12 closures for a total estimated cost of $27.8 million. Now, the program offers 75% grants and loans at, with 25% coming from the local communities that, that, it, that operate the small unlined landfills. As I mentioned, there was only one that came off of the list last year because of COVID with a small one added that, that uh, was put on number 11. So it's anticipated that these 19 projects that still remain on the priority list will be completed sometime around 2024 and they are not asking for any additional appropriation at this time. They think they have enough to complete all projects. So I stand for questions, and if there are none, none I call for the question. Discussion on the bill. Chairman Harshman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question really on this funding. I think maybe the good chairman of Minerals, we did this in appropriations a few years back. There was a, one of the pennies one of your fuel pennies, they all have to go to road maintenance and construction, but uh, constitutionally mandated, but we did kind of a money swap with FMR monies. And so that was called the leaking underground storage tanks. And so we had this problem in the state of these old gas stations and they had these old tanks that were buried. That was called the lust penny. And uh, so then that problem got solved about 2013. And I'm looking at some of the members who are on appropriations. And we said, here's a revenue source to take care of this emerging, these uh, underground, these leaking landfills that aren't mined. And so we moved that lust penny money into this. And so I guess what I'm hearing is it sounds like we're coming to the end of this and we maybe take that penny back to building roads again. So any comments by the, or maybe let educate myself and the body on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Greer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to, the, uh, to the Chairman of Revenue and the ex-Chairman of uh, Appropriations, let, let me, um, you're, you're somewhat right. 
So uh, not not a hundred percent do I have the numbers in my mind, but let let me go with this: is that the the uh, the lust program uh, been in place? needed to go in place in the state of Wyoming. Otherwise we wouldn't have any local gas stations, uh, just simply the way it is. And it saved a lot of small businesses. It's been a very good program. It's been ran very well uh, and, and um, it's helped small communities, small businesses uh, throughout the state of Wyoming. Uh, four years ago, what we saw is that these, these old sites through, through a couple of reasons why, one is better regulation, better technology, quite frankly, and monitoring these tanks. And so there were less leaks that were occurring. And we were getting these uh, sites cleaned up as we move through it. Now, to say that, there's still a component uh, of the LUST funds that is absolutely necessary. And what it is, is it's, uh, I'm gonna use the wrong term here, but in essence, it's a backstop or a state insurance or guarantee that allows gas stations to be able to operate and get their license and their insurance. And it's a very important, very critical, and we've never touched that, nor will we ever mess with it. It'd be absolutely necessary in the state of Wyoming. We still have leaks. We had a leak in Lander, a discharge in Lander two years ago, I want to say. So there are some sites that had added on to that. Okay, so with this, this one penny, the last penny, what we said is an amount over, and I'm gonna, and it's starting to phase in. And I may get this wrong, but it's something $7 million each year is what's necessary to be in this account. And once we trip over that, there is a certain amount, and say it's a million and a half to $2 million, which is rolling over to the solid waste issue that came about as a reclassification um, by the federal government in 2008, I believe. Now, it doesn't go to this account, uh, Mr. Chairman. It goes to uh, the municipal solid waste account, which is a major account for that. And that account has a list of landfills and they're typically landfills in some of the larger communities. And we're working on those cleanups and dealing with those environmental issues so that we're still able to dispose of our solid waste in these larger communities. The cease and transfer uh, account uh, is a sub account of it. And as the cease and uh, transfer account came up, I worked on the subcommittee and was, uh, very much involved in this legislation uh, came about from the standpoint of, you know what, we have small communities who really can't afford the true cost of dealing with municipal solid waste. And so we started with some consolidation that we see with some bigger landfills and more metropolitan areas are able to deal with it properly. And what we were doing to allow small communities to still be able to deal with their uh, solid waste is we started with this cease and transfer. So one of the best things we can do to protect the groundwater and stay in compliance with the environmental regulations, quite frankly, is to just properly cap these landfills. It's, it's, it, and it's a simple component. And as a result, what we found with the cease and transfer program is we took this huge cost, there's over $200 million to be estimated, and we shrunk this list down and made significant progress in solving this problem believe it or not, for like half of what we thought. It's been wildly successful. So hopefully I've answered that question regarding the lust penny. I wish I had the exact numbers and if anybody wants it, I can get you that information, let me know. Further discussion? Further discussion? Back to the Representative Heiner. Any final comments? Saying none, are you ready for the question? Question being called, all those in favor of Chairman Greer's motion that when the Committee of the Whole rises to report it do so with a recommendation that Senate File 44 do pass. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate File 44 is passed Committee of the Whole. The next bill for our consideration is Senate File 40. The reading clerk will read the bill. Senate File 40, sponsored by Minerals, Wyoming Money Transmitters Act Amendments, an act relating to trade and commerce. Mr. Speaker, your committee number nine, Minerals and Business and Economic Development, to whom was referred Senate File 40, Wyoming Money Transmitters Act Amendments, respectful report, same back to the House with the recommendation that it do pass. Ayes, Representatives Baer, Burkhart, Duncan, Ayer, Greer, Heiner, Sherwood, 
Western. Noes, Representative Gray. Representative Greer, Chairman. You've heard the reading of the bill. What is your pleasure, Chairman Greer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the Committee of the Whole Rises report to do so the recommendation that Senate File 40 do pass for the explanation. I'll turn it over to the gentleman from House District 51. Representative Western, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this bill's here because it, it's kind of a, a cleanup bill and it's, and it's kind of refreshing some antiquated language that's on our statutes, specifically as regards to folks who want to transmit money. Uh, Pre-digital age, if you will, the way you did it was you went down to the grocery store and you went to that company that happens to also be my last name. Uh, <laughs> and also that we happen to be a union uh, in, in the United States. And so you took that, went down to that place, the grocery store to that company, you filled out a wire transfer, you transfer money to your friend, wherever they are. That's kind of the old way of transferring money. Well, in this day and age, I can just pick up my phone, use an app that's connected to my bank account and send money to anyone, anywhere in the world. Basically, that's more or less how it works. And so with this advent of new technologies and new companies that have come out, long story short, that the language that has been on the books has made it kind of hard for them to, to, to operate uh, within the confines of, of, of the statute. And so this just kind of updates it and makes it easier for them uh, to do so. So if we just kind of walk into the bill, a lot of it's kind of just technical cleanup, stuff like that. For example, on um, page five and six, it just simply is switching it from administrator to commissioner. Um, and then it also uh, uh, ties it to the Code of Federal Regulations and reform uh, uh, and, and using their FinCEN definition uh, for some of these terms like prepaid access, stored value, uh, things like that. Um, like I said, I could go on for, for quite a long time about this, but it, it really just kind of uh, reforms some of those definitions, brings them into, into modern times so that these companies can, can operate more smoothly. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Discussion on the bill? <clears throat> So our question being called, all those in favor of Chairman Greer's motion that when the Committee of the Whole rises to report it, do so with a recommendation that Senate File 40 do pass. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate File 40 has passed Committee of the Whole. The next bill for our... Senate File 52. Senate File 52, sponsored by Labor, Insurance, Mental Health, and Substance Use Parity, an act relating to insurance. Mr. Speaker, your committee number 10, Labor, Health, and Social Services, to whom was referred Senate File 52, Insurance, Mental Health, and Substance Use Parity, respectfully report same back to the House with a recommendation that it do pass with the following amendments. Ayes, Representatives Clifford, Connolly, Hallinan, Ottman, Romero Martinez, Stivar, Wilson. Noes, Representatives Flitner, Worth. Representative Wilson, Chairman. You've heard the reading of the bill. What is your pleasure, Chairman Wilson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that when the Committee of the Whole rises to report, it do so with the recommendation that Senate File 52 do pass. And I further move the Standing Committee Amendment, which, Mr. Chairman, I will just work into the explanation of the bill, if that's all right. Proceed. And I will explain the bill myself. It's a fairly simple little bill. Um, starting back last spring, you know, when everybody sh shut down, um, we started hearing from mental health providers that their clients, um, and this was a situation where, which particularly impacted mental health and substance abuse uh, needs, people with those needs, that out of concern for infection, uh, there was just a need to be able to provide services to people by telehealth, which they were doing. And the providers across the state have stepped up in an amazing way to be able to do counseling for people with mental health and substance abuse needs, needs excuse me, by, um, by telephone or by, as we are all well acquainted with now, the various audio visual type programs that you have available. The problem that arose was that um, we were seeing that in there, in the judgment of the insurance companies, this wasn't worth as much payment as seeing someone in the office. Now, normally we're reluctant to wade into this sort of topic, but it did seem to us that as we look at expanding 
telehealth services in general across the state that um, if you're counseling a person about their anxiety or their depression, that we felt that this was an area where we did need to step in. So this, all the bill does, and by the way, we have consulted with the, the folks that regulate our insurance. This is not considered to be a new benefit. So it has no um, financial impact on the, the uh, tax com uh, collection that we collect from insurance companies. So on page two, we just add in that no policy or contract providing mental health or substance use coverage. And by the way, we some years ago we did pass, there was a federal law that followed up in the state. There, there is supposed to be equity between the benefits that people receive in mental health and in physical health. So on line 19, we don't want them to deny coverage for mental health or substance abuse services if they're delivered using remote audio or audio visual if the coverage would be provided for the same service when delivered in person. In other words, we're not asking for the insurer to cover a new service. If they don't cover psychologists, say, they don't have to cover them in, in person or in, by telehealth. We're just saying, if you would cover it in person by that category of person, then you should cover it. Top of page three, line five, that they can't charge a copayment or deductible that is higher than the copayment or deductible that they would charge for in-person. And line nine, that they cannot reduce the payment, the reimbursement to the provider um, to less than the payment for a reimbursement for the same service in person. And Mr. Chairman, this is where the uh, standing committee amendment is goes in on line 10 of page three here. Uh, cleverly noticed by a member of our committee, we merely missed putting in the words audio or, so the we just conformed this paragraph with the other two paragraphs. Then the other um, feature of the standing committee amendment is on page three, line 18. This is not the effective date of the act. This is the policies. You can see on line 18, it says that the act applies to policies um, uh, issued or amended after April, it initially wrote April 1, and that was because we drafted the bill way back last May, and we assumed we would have a normal session that would be done by the beginning of March. However, at this point, uh, insurers obviously are issuing policies and we won't be done. So we've just extended it out to December 1st. And Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to answer it. Oh, I guess I can maybe take the, uh, Having moved the standing committee amendment, Mr. Chairman, if there are questions on that, I guess we could. Uh, Any discussion that. on standing committee amendment number one? <clears throat> You've heard the motion on standing committee amendment number one. Uh, question having been called, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Standing committee amendment number one has been adopted. We're back on the bill, Chairman Good. Wilson. Mr. Chairman, any, I would just be glad to address questions. And we have a committee of the whole, or Chairman Flitter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just would like to clarify, I was a no-in committee, but I have since changed my position on this. So vote aye. And Mr. Chairman, I, 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 if I may. Please proceed, Chairman. I, I just remembered, I did have a committee of the whole amendment, but I'm gonna withdraw that. Thank you. Committee of the whole amendment number one has been withdrawn. We're back on the bill. Any other discussion? Um, okay, our question having been called, all those in favor of Chairman Wilson's motion that when Committee of the Whole rises to report, it do so with a recommendation that Center File 52 do pass. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Center File 52 has passed committee of the whole. The next bill for our consideration will be Senate file 56. Senate uh, file. Reading clerk will read the bill. Senate file 56, sponsored by travel. Wyoming Gaming Commission, modifications and corrections, an act relating to gaming. You've heard the reading of the bill. What is your pleasure? Chairman Nicholas. Where is he? Thank <clears throat> you. 
Mr. Chairman, I move on the committee whole rise and report. It does so with a recommendation that Senate file 56 do pass. And I'll turn the explanation of the over to the good representative from Casper. Representative Walters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before you members is how, uh, Senate file 56, uh, Wyoming Gaming Commission modification and corrections. And I will walk you through this bill. There is also a standing committee amendment that I'll move at this time. And as we do that, I will, as I walk through the bill, I'm going to incorporate that amendment as we go, just uh, for clarity's purpose. And, and I think it'll be easier that way. So Mr. Chairman, for the members that were here last year, this was a, a large discussion we had last year, uh, went well. And now we are here to put into our, move from our green books and session, or from our session laws into our green books. And so if we start on page two, uh, section number one, this is the creation of what we did last year that was in our session law that is now in the green books. And that was House Enrolled Act number 95. And so that's where we start on line 10 of page two, moving down the page uh, that is just codifying that language from last year. <clears throat> I will note that on the, um, in the amendment, page one of the standing committee amendment lines eight through 12 are going to be deleting the lines on page two of the bill. Uh, 21, 22, and part of 23, and I will explain what we're doing as we get farther into this uh, explanation. Uh, moving on to page three, uh, all of this is codifying existing language from the session law last year. There is an amendment on line four of page three, and we just delete continue operating and insert operate there. Again, on line 18 of page three, another amendment, and this is on, we will delete the word directly and this allows for the applicant to see what is in the report they submit and that way if they see something they don't like they can withdraw their application and uh, start the process over. It's a really a cost saving measure for both the uh, commission as well as the entity that's that is uh, applying. Moving on to page four. Uh, subsection B starting on line four of, of page four, this is new language that was created when this bill was down the hall. Uh, and so what this is, is it's a talking about submitting a new lab report whenever the, the uh, game see alterations, modifications, or updates. Um, 11.25.303 starting on, on line 11 on page four, that's again just codifying existing language. And what this is talking about is keeping these games at the amusement level. So a low uh, maximum allowable per play, low maximum uh, payout, all of those things keep this at an entertainment level. And then subsection C, uh, again, codifying last year's language, says that there will be no more than four games per establishment uh, available that are operating for play. Moving on to page five, all of page five is again, uh, codifying existing language. Uh, there are a couple amendments that I will point out. In subsection D, this discusses that these games will be located in areas of the establishment that are delineated as 21 years and older. And then it also discusses that uh, you must be 21 years of age to play these games. Uh, on lines 11 and 12, the application fee, tax imposition, taxation rate distribution, and then the amendment steps in and also inquire, uh, adds required permits and licenses. And that comes off the standing committee amendment, page one, line 21, if you're trying to follow it on the standing committee amendment. Uh, moving on to lines 14 and 15 on page five, this is upon the approval of the application by the commission and then we add in the, uh, at the amendment on lines 23 through 27 of the amendment. And we're going to insert any person seeking to obtain any license permit or decal as required under this section shall submit an application to the commission on a form, per, form prescribed by the commission. And so this is really just clarifying language on how these folks will apply for these permits and, and licenses. And so again, uh, that, that is one of the amendments or sections of the standing committee amendment. Moving on to lines 18, this is, says it will cost $250 per establishment. On line 19 of page five, we will delete the word to continue. Uh, just not, it's just unnecessary language. And that's for the operator. And then uh, sec, subsection two is for the vendor license. Moving on to page six. 
the very first line on page six, again, we're going to delete that, uh, the words to continue. All of page six is codifying the existing language from the session laws. Uh, in subsection C, which starts on line 13 of page six, we have the fees required, and these fees are required to be, pay, be paid on or before July 1st of each year. Subsection D, this discusses the taxes. And so the taxes are 10, or excuse me, 20% of the net proceeds. And then they're distributed as followed on page seven, which starts on line 11, 45% to the city, town, and county. Uh, and the paragraph spells out how that works. Subsection two, line 17, 45% of the uh, net proceeds will go to the school foundation program account. Again, this is all from last year's language. And subsection three, 10% uh, to the gaming commission account. And this is for the commission to be able to regulate these games. Moving on to page eight, codifying existing language or excuse me, this is new language that was uh, put in down the hall. Uh, so this is allowing 60 days for from the date of application. And that way there's just a timeline. So the commission can't drag on these applications for a, an extended period of time. So it puts a deadline on the application uh, to get it uh, through the, the gaming commission and, and moving forward. And then on line 17, subsection B, we start discussing grounds for denial. And in line 21, uh, we'll bring in part of the amendment again, and this will be on uh, page one of the amendment, lines 33 and 34. At the end of line 21, we'll say the applicant has been convicted of, or uh, four-footed bail on or pleaded guilty within the last 10 years or within 10 years. And so that's just so that uh, something you did as a teenager doesn't haunt you when you're 60 years old. Moving on to the top of page eight. Again, this is new language that was inserted down the hall. Uh, line one, we're going to add the, put in an amendment here. And this is uh, the amendments on page one, line 36 of the amendment, delete crime and insert felony there. And that way it's, it's a, not just a simple little issue, but something that really rose to the uh, level of being a concern. And again, these are all grounds for denial of these applications for the operator. Uh, Moving on down, and they list down through their A, B, C, D. Uh, in D, I'll, uh, page one, lines 38 through 41 of the amendment come into play in D. And so that what that says is at the end of the line, that what it reads is D, any other crime identified by commission rules that negatively impact the applicant's credibility or security and integrity or fairness of play of skill-based amusement games operated by the applicant. So again, uh, making sure that the crime is related to, to what the activity that they're doing. Uh, if it's totally unrelated, it shouldn't affect them. Uh, moving on to subsection two here, on starting on line 13. This is discussing failing to disclose information. And again, we're going to add a, in line 13, a little bit of an amendment. So after the word applicant, tampered with, submitted document, or, and then concealed, failed, or disclosed. And again, we're just what information they failed to disclose to the commission when making this application. Subsection three is failing to co cooperate with the commission. Uh, moving on to the top of, or moving on to page 10. This is all new language. Subsection C is continue, uh, the continuing duty to disclose information by the operators if they change name, if they get in trouble, things like that. They, it's their responsibility to offer those those uh, changes in information and what they have going on to the commission. And then on the bottom of page 10 in line 20, this uh, inserts the application of the Administrative, in a, Administrative Procedures Act. It was probably already known that they could go through this procedure, but it's uh, certainly a belt and suspenders to make sure we add that. And, and that way, if they're denied a uh, permit, they know how to go about uh, appealing that denial. Moving on to the middle of the page on page 11, uh, the penalties section, this is all codifying the existing law from lines uh, 12 through the bottom of page 11. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, page 12, 6, 7, 101. This is the criminal statutes discussing, uh, discussing gaming. And so all of page 12 is just conforming language. All of page 13 is conforming language. 
All of page 14 is conforming language. 15 is conforming and cleanup type of changes on 15. And 16, the top half of the page is conforming. Uh, moving to the bottom portion of the page, these are definitions. And so uh, within the definitions on line 16, and a stat, this is codification of the existing language with an amendment, and this amendment arrives in your standing committee amendment, uh, page two, lines 12 through 16. So an establishment means a single physical place of business which operates as a truck stop or licensed or permitted to sell alcoholic liquor or malt beverages under uh, statute 124201, 124301, 124407, and 124413. And, and that uh, the truck stops and liquor licenses are the, admit, uh, the amendment that's being added there. Moving on to lines 19 through 21, this is just a new definition as the members down the hall uh, cleaned up these definitions from last year's uh, statute. Uh, top of page 17, we have a new definition for skill. Middle of the page, uh, we have a new definition for skill-based amusement game. And really the biggest change is on line 10 where it says is the primary factor in determining the outcome of the game. And then at the bottom of, or on line uh, 16 there, we bring in another we're on page 17 again. We bring in another definition, and this is where we bring in the definition of what is a truck stop. That's uh, lines 20 through 33 of your, on page two of your standing committee amendment. I won't read that to you because it's a little lengthy, but uh, that's where that comes into play again is on line, uh, right after line 15 on page 17. The new definition of a vendor on page 17, moving on to page 18. We have a new section that says the commission shall access criminal history for information on for all operators and vendors. And this is just to make sure that they can get the best information about the people applying. Uh, the bottom of the page, 331202, this is conforming language. All of page 19 is conforming language. All of page 20 is conforming language. All of page 21 is conforming language. Page 22. We get to uh, section three, and this is the grandfathering of existing permitted games that's needed due to the new definitions within this bill and other changes that are within this particular bill we're looking at. And what it does is it gives uh, six months to have everything submitted before pulling the plugs on the machine because we have changed these definitions and, and changed other things. So that's what it does there. And section four, this is a re-review of the 2020 applicants. And then uh, moving on to page 23, we're going to insert a new section five. And this is on page two of your standing committee amendment on lines 39 through 47. And this is uh, the grandfathering of games that are in locations not tied to the liquor license or truck stops that would now come into play because of the amendment that was discussed earlier. Moving on to page 24 of the bill, uh, Subsection six on the bill, there's a numbering change that takes place in the, the uh, standing committee amendment. That's insignificant, but for the bill's purpose, subsection six, this is the sunset repeal of the 2020 session laws because they are being codified in this bill before us today. And this is the, then subsection seven is the effective date, uh, effective immediately. And to round out uh, the, the standing committee amendment, page three of the standing committee amendment is just technical in nature as it takes care of the renumbering mechanisms that are needed to uh, just make the bill flow correctly. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, slow down or stop for a moment and take questions on this. Again, this is the codification of the bill we passed last year, and I would gladly take any questions. Representative Yen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So members, um, this was a very long discussion last year uh, during our budget session about what we wanna do with skill games. Um, you know, I think many of us put skill games in the same arena as slot machines and a lot of us didn't want, so skill games kind of fit in a loophole in our gambling as an exception under skill games. And what we did last year was codify what a skill-based amusement game is made sure it doesn't fill, we, we close that loophole 
and then we regulate the skill games that are currently in the state right now. And then we put a sunset on it for a year fr from the enactment date. So that sunset is July 1st, 2021. And so if the sunset happened, um, the session law would be repealed and then skill games wouldn't be allowed, but that definition where we close the loophole is still there. So skill games would be, would essentially become illegal because they would count as gambling. What the, the bill does is it codifies it, removes the sunset date, but still only allows the skill games that we had in place in the state. What the standing committee amendment does, it does a couple of policy decisions. It allows more crimes to, to, to be on your record to allow you to apply for a permit. I don't know why we do that, but that's whatever. Uh, the, the major change in the standing committee amendment is that we actually allow all truck stops and all liquor businesses to now apply for new skill games. So we're allowing an expansion of allowing these skill-based amusement games in the state. And, and so I think that's a huge policy decision that we need to have a long conversation about if we want more skill games than already exist in the state. Um, and so I, 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 I would ask the, the good uh, bringer of the amendment to, to discuss if that's really true. And if we are expanding skill games, um, what, what is the limit? And even in the discussion that we had last year, we had counties able to either opt in or opt out. I don't remember the exact language that we had settled on before we ended up changing it. We don't even have that opt in opt out language anymore. So counties don't have any local control over whether they allow the increase in skill games or not. Basically all truck stops and all liquor, liquor um, sellers would be able to have skill games in their establishment. And I, I, I don't think that is really what the policy decision that we wanted in this house. And so I'll ask you to vote no on the standing committee amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on and against the uh, standing committee minute, and, and I'm not sure if I can retrieve the bill, but, um, and I just wanna really back up what the previous speaker said, you know, from the opposite corner of the state now, I voted for the commission last year, that was House Bill 171, because I believed that we needed to regulate what was in place. And I was, I, I was able to bear voting for such a thing because of the sunset date, which the way I interpreted, perhaps foolishly, was that we would sunset the ability to have these games, enable people that had them to have, you know, not an immediate yanking away of this fund source for them. So, although in talking to someone earlier this morning, I said, well, you know, if, if understanding that this bill tightened up regulations, I thought, well, that's good. I'm all in favor of regulations. So I said that. But to me, the phrase that it codifies session law, when session law had a sunset date, I, I don't think that, to my mind, that's not how I in, would interpret that phrase. Um, I'm very, con personally, I'm very concerned with the idea that we are essentially expanding this. I don't like that. That's, that's, as, that's as polite as I can say that. I don't like this and I'm not sure if I can manage to retrieve it and tighten up the regulation if that's what the rest of it does. Um, I'd be glad to hear more. Representative Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> And I'm just trying to recall all of the discussion and would ask the bringer of the bill if he could just um, review that and make sure that that I'm understanding. I, he and I sit next to each other and I keep forgetting how this, this works out, but it sticks in my mind last year that we had this great debate. This room out here was full of people that says skill games or slot machines and we had uh, people that were we, they, that we wanted to have slot machines. We we come to a conclusion which I agreed with that skills games were not the same as a slot machine, and we established that. And we argued it here on the floor a great deal. Then we said, uh, do we expand if we establish a gaming commission, or do we just go ahead and expand and allow slot machines and other sorts of gambling? We had a couple of those bills. And then we says, but slot, but game, but uh, skills games are already in place. Went 
down by the Jonah building and a few other places and looked at some. And they're already here. And so until we get this gaming commission, the gaming commission's established, let them come back to us with some recommendations. But there was this freeze on skills games and we weren't going to expand it. And I have in my mind, I keep referring to this as the grand compromise of 2020, where we said that we were going to allow the skill games, but we were not going to allow slot machines. We did not want to, at that time, the consensus of this body was is we did not want to expand gaming in the state of Wyoming. And we felt that there was a very close nexus. They're, they're different between skills games and slot machines. Um, and there's a lot of they're, they're, the, the similarities between a strawberry roan and a blue roan are a little bit different too. And we said they are different. And so we was going to put this sunset date and I had it in my mind, unless we was going to move forward with the, the gaming commission was going to come back and make recommendations to expand gaming, which would include these and others. And without that, I think the sunset date was in place. And so if, if I've misspoken, I would like my dear friend to correct me on that, but I'm kind of thinking that that's where we ended up. And then this bill lifts that sunset date, puts things in the green book and removes a lot of the language that the good speak, uh, the good representative from Teton County for local say, which we do that. This is a new bill, new things, but if you could correct my errors, please. You want to take a few of those questions, Representative Walters? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to address those few questions, uh, really starting with one of the questions that was asked in the middle of there about the uh, whole issue here that we're discussing today. And when we passed uh, what was House Bill 171 last year, House Enrolled Act 95, we knew we would be back this year discussing this issue again because of the sunset in that bill. We knew that if we didn't come back and address this issue, I'm gonna use the analogy of current, we had passed the bill which gave the gaming commission the ability to corral everything. So we've got all the cows and sheep and yaks and any other livestock in the corral. If we don't address this this year in some way, we're just turning them all back out and starting from ground zero again. So we have, these, have them all identified. The commission has done an outstanding job of going around the state, determining what's out there, determining what meets the definition of a skill-based amusement game. And they have done an outstanding job of getting those all permitted, getting the applicants through the process. And that has all worked well. And if we do not do anything this year, as I said, we go back to ground zero and we'll be here again next year and the next year and the next year trying to decide how we want to address these games that prior to last year were expanding all over the state, unregulated, untaxed, so that no one was getting anything off of it for state benefits. And they were all coming with negative impacts to all of our communities. So we have, we, uh, we as the legislature said, this is how we want to start to proceed. We wanna freeze what's going on in the state right now. And that's what took place last year. Over the last year, the the gaming commission or the commission that regulates these has worked towards the identification of who's out there, who's operating, what's operating. That's worked very well. And so I keep repeating, we don't wanna go back to square ground zero and start this process over again. So that try, hopefully attempts to answer what, what would take place if this does not pass. The sunset would go away, but the games could still go on because we still have the, uh, the loophole in, in place that was allowing them pre last year. And so, so I think that, that codifying what we did last year is very important. As to the question about why do, in the standing commit, committee amendment, do we increase a little, have allow for a little expansion through truck stops and liquor licenses? Well, the liquor licenses is in my view, quite simple because to play the games, you have to be 21 years of age. So they tie easily and why, and why have expansion? because we talk about winners and losers on this floor on a regular basis. And if we don't allow some kind of regulated, well-regulated well expansion, we, this body that sat here just over 10 months ago, will have picked all the winners and losers for these games. We will have said the only games allowed are what were here on March 17th of 2020. 
And so any other uh, bar owner or anyone else would never have the opportunity. And as we watched what took place during the pandemic, these games were a lifeblood to these small bars because they get a, a portion of the proceeds. And so as someone came in to enjoy a beverage and, and, and have a little entertainment for 20 minutes or a half hour, the bar owner received some of that revenue. And so it helped keep them open, helped keep them going. And so this doesn't just benefit the states. It's an amusement game, just like darts, pool, and everything else. And it's one more thing that draws a patron into that establishment for, for some entertainment. And so uh, that, that's why we wanted to say we could have a small amount of expansion because we didn't wanna be the ones picking those winners and losers. Now, the interesting thing that the commission has learned over the last year is why add truck stops. And what they have learned is what every state tries to do. And that is to make money off of people from outside of the state. And what they've learned is truck stops are generating three to one what any other establishment in the state of Wyoming is doing. And so what are truck stops? People in your own communities don't go to truck stops to hang out because they're fun places. It's out of staters coming through our state, leaving their money in our state and then taken off. So why wouldn't we take advantage of an out of stater wanting to leave their money in our great state of Wyoming? And like I said, the commission, now that we have these under control has learned they're doing that at a rate of three to one versus the, the fixed establishment, other establishments within the state. And again, I'm going to come back to the point of if we're picking winners and losers, we've really done a great job of it. If we don't allow for some well-regulated expansion here, because we're saying nobody that didn't have these games in place after March 17th of 2020 can have these games in place. And to me, we have picked a handful of winners and really left a whole lot out in the cold. So that's why we wanted to have a small amount of expansion allowed. It's well-regulated. It's, it's tied to a, a unique group there. Again, even in the truck stops, because of the, the other language, they are required to have it in a location within the, their establishment that is delineated as 21 years and up only. And the games are required to be played by 21 years and older people. Uh, so that starts to answer a few of those questions. I may have missed one in there. I was trying to get the notes, but if I did miss your question, I certainly apologize. It's not intentional and I'll ask it again and I'll answer it again. But to, to the question that was asked right towards the end, we knew a year ago we were going to have this great debate once again this year because we knew we wanted to stop what was going on. We wanted to figure out what was going on and that has taken place. And now we know how to handle it, how to regulate it and remind you that these are amusement-based games. These are not profit centers. Research has shown that low minimum bets, low maximum payouts keeps people from problem gaming, keeps it at an amusement level because if they can't win en enough to buy the new car, they don't play it for extended periods. Just like they put coins in the dartboard, they play for a while, it's fun and then they're ready to go socialize. That's what these games allow is an amusement-based uh, entertainment source. So I'll take some more questions and uh, thank you for the ones that have came so far. Representative Steph. Mr. Chairman, on and in support of standing committee amendment number one, uh, for the reasons explained very well by the representative from district 38, this amendment's really important because it's the, it's the way we uh, have an open, a freer market that doesn't freeze in place the existing operators. So it's really important. And the truck stop inclusion also is a, a good idea for the reasons uh, stated by the member from representative from uh, District 38. Thank you. Representative Yen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I wanna be very clear, these skill-based amusement games, you put in money, you play the game with the expect, expectation that you have the possibility of winning a prize. You know what else does that? A, a slot machine. So would we all as a body be okay with expanding slot machines into liquor stores and truck stops? I, I'm not sure that we would. So I think the framing, even, even if it had low bets and low returns, I, I'm not really positive that we would put slot machines in truck stops and liquor stores. Um, and so I, I just wanna make sure that we're, we're accurately calling what these games what they are, which is Gambling, even if it's low value gambling, it's gambling. And when we talk about um, the conversation of what we had last year, yes, we did kick the can down the road. And, and the benefit was that we got to establish the, the gaming commission and we got to, to cover some of the other games that we do allow like bingo games and nonprofits and, and stuff like that to make sure 
that 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 was in place. So we have that structure to, to make sure that we regulate what we do have in place. But then we put the sunset and the sunset was specifically on the skill based amusement games. And what that did was that it gave every establishment that basically operated in this loophole um, until we established the law to have at least another year. So they're not going to lose out money on their investment if they had just bought a skill game and just put it in there establishment. So that gave them a year of one runway to make sure that they don't operate at a loss for their investment. But ultimately, what we do is if we extend this and allow it for expansion, um, we're putting the problems of problem gaming on the rest of our communities. And uh, even even though we are continuing to allow it for the establishments that already have it, um, it still has the same problems that a slot machine would have. So again, I, I will say, uh, even even if we're saying choose winners and losers. I don't want the losers to be the citizens of Wyoming. Um, I, I want them to be the winners. Uh, and, and that's why we did this compromise uh, to make sure that we have that runway so we don't let the establishments that already did it be losers. But um, again, I don't think expansion of, of these machines is really what we want. And so I will ask you to again, vote no on the standing committee amendment number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Majority Floor Leader Summers. Mr. Chairman, thank you on and support of the bill. But as it relates to the, this amendment, you know, there was kind of a fine line we walked last session to get where we got. And part of that fine line was keeping this section out. In other words, not expanding to truck stops. And, uh, and, and I do worry more about mom and pop bar owners and, and I certainly support their ability to utilize these. I think we made a lot of decisions or non-decisions last year. And, and, and this is a question, it's a little bit on the bill and not on the amendment, but I, I do want to hear the answer. And that is, it seemed like we sunset that act. We could have put in place, and I believe it was tried to make a definition of skill games and explicitly make it illegal upon the sunset of that. So my question is, when the sunset occurs, we just go back to our current law right, which kind of had some holes in it? Or did we in fact put in place a sunset that created a hard, um, a hard Ill illegality in these gangs? So that's a question, but on the amendment, I'm pretty sure I'm opposed to the amendment because I don't want to expand to struck stops. Representative Larson. Thank you, and it's, for you younger folks, it's <clears throat> rough getting a little bit older and your mind's not as quick as it once was and I can't remember it. I, this is kind of like a neighbor giving me a cat. I, I think a little bit, I don't like cats. Um, but if my daughter really wants one, I'd probably let her have it, but this is a three-legged cat. And it just is not what, it's, and, and the reason I say that is because we're talking, we, we, we said we didn't, we was gonna hold this sunset. We're gonna keep it at the number it was gonna be so that we could determine if the gaming commission, if we was gonna expand any type of gaming. And so I understand that these are amusement games and, and they, you can't go and buy the car, but if you are going to introduce slot machines, you can, I believe I'll look at my colleague from Fremont County, but I think you can restrict the winnings on, on slot machines too, to be, and I'm getting the positive here that that aren't excessive. Maybe you wouldn't go out and get a cat. So when we talk about picking winners and losers, in essence, that this amendment is doing exactly that. It's saying we're going to allow skill games to penetrate additional market in Wyoming without letting any other type of similar, even though I understand there's a difference between a skills game and a slot machine, but we're allowing them to migrate further into to the state when we had this, I, I, I'm just not comfortable with that. It's, it's, got, it's only got three legs. I'm against the amendment. Representative. Mark, please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on in support of the amendment, uh, I just want to start off with uh, answering the question from, uh, from District 16. Yes, actually, I would like to see an increase of slot machines. 
I mean, it's free market, why not? Uh, I mean, if we're looking at expansion into, you know, businesses that, that you know, basically uh, bars and truck stops, I think our liquor commission, oh, I don't know if I can say that or not, sorry. Um, no, I was saying the liquor commission. I mean, we, we already have, our counties already have a number of, of um, permits that restrict how many businesses, how many bars can open up in a particular area. So it isn't like we're going to see an increase of 40 or 50 of these particular machines and, and businesses around particular communities. The, that business is already regulated at a, from a different agency on, on how many can be in a community. So um, being able to expand into that, that particular area, I think already has a a control in place on on the on the drinking establishments. Something to think about is a truck stop. And personal experience as a as a former over the road truck driver. When we look at going down the road in a truck and we try to plan where we're going to stop, uh, you know, usually we got to do a ten hour restart within a twenty four hour period. Truck drivers like to stop at truck stops that provide more amenities, whether it's a washer and dryer. Uh, whether it's games or or whatever the whatever the, the the case may be. So when we look at how many times have our highways been shut down here in the interstate, how many trucks have been stopped at our truck stops for one or two days, a week, you know, how many times of that? Now these truck drivers are just sitting there because they can't go anywhere. They can't go home. They don't. They can't go home from the from the area. They don't have family. They just sit in their truck and they have nothing else to do. So when we look at the truck stop, you know, provision to to increase these, uh, these skilled games, something to look at is, is adding more benefits brings in more trucks to our, our area, which they're already going to travel the state. But instead of stopping uh, you know, on, on either side of the state at a, different, uh, at a different state, they can actually provide more amenities and make our truck stops locally more, more attractive to outside business, you know, you know, trucks to come in and, and spend more money. So a couple of things to look at, you know, consider. I am on in the, in favor. Representative Sweeney and then to the speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, on in, in favor of the amendment, um, let's not get confused when we use the word expansion. Um, yes, we did talk last year um, about truck stops and it's better clarified and defined with what has been done uh, through the Good Gaming Commission. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the good representative that presented the bill and the amendments uh, for his hard work and the majority floor leader from the Senate who acted as liaisons to with the gaming new propped up set up gaming commission. So what we're talking about on the expansion is pretty simple. And we're not looking at expanding to all, all, uh, slot machines, we're talking about skilled games. We already regulated historic horse racing. So the skilled games, totally different. And they have to go, they're tested at a lab um, as to the programming and all of that. So the expansion, is other operators as far as the bars, 21 years of age are allowed in the bar. So what we've said is some bars were locked out and some restaurants that have a game area you know, that allows 21 years old only in certain spots. Again, those operators, and this has been a lifeline uh, during the pandemic to, to some of those bars and, and operators. So the expansion is just those that didn't 
have any of the skilled games when this all went into a, an effect. So don't, don't get totally off track here on that you're going to have. We're trying not to have a casino on every corner. That's what we don't want. But if you don't lift the sunset, sunset, and I really believe the amendment gets us to where we need to be uh, for the Gaming Commission to truly continue to regulate and give the sideboards that are necessary. But with that, on and for, and a Appreciate the good representative's hard work on this. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could I have a personal privilege? Please proceed. So members, and certainly for the members of the public, I want to clear the record that there are very, a lot of um, very lovely um, animals that can be amputees and still bring a lot of joy in people's lives. I had one myself, Patty Butch. She was a lovely long-haired cat, and she had a very good life with my family, including my daughter. So uh, let's be clear, this may be, the bill may have missing an appendage, but there are a lot of um, animals that have a, have, and have good lives and enrich your life, even though they may be missing an appendage. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Representative Knapp. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I'm not gonna speak uh, for or against the amendment. I just want the body to remind itself that we've waded into the lake and you either swim or you don't swim. Gambling, the decision for gambling, whether it was horse racing, horse racing games. Uh, this session we did online gaming in that contentious passage um, and we've got skill-based games. I didn't, I didn't make this decision, um, but here we are. So if it's going to happen, which it has already happened, you may as well do it because the money will go to schools and the money will go to local governments. But the decision was made and so whether you limit it a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more, I'd go back to the original decision. We have skills-based gaming. If you don't want it, repeal it. If you have it, take advantage of it. Thank you. Representative Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I was just thinking, what's not to like about cats? But I'm on the amendment and, uh, and I would like to say, uh, I'm favoring this amendment, and I think we can fix it in second reading as far as far as the point, the very good point about local control and the preferences of the county. I think there's a lot of good stuff that we did last time, and this amendment goes a step further, well, more than a step, goes a long way towards helping with regard to the inputs from the commission and others to help make this a better statute for our state. You know, I think this all, all things considered, has a lot of positive potential for our state if it's well regulated. You know, the stools are put together right, and the cats are happy, and I'm I'm okay with it. So I'd I'd urge a favorable a vote on this amendment. Thank you, Representative Newsom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm on and for the amendment, on and for the bill. Let's look at the scope of of what these games do. There are currently 836 licensed skill games operating in 306 locations. I would bet in each one of your communities, there is a establishment with one of these skill games or four of them as they're allowed. So this has provided from interaction with folks in my community during the COVID times, it's just provided a little bit of extra revenue for them. You know, it's, it's not gonna make or break, it's not gonna let them buy their new car, but it is gonna help them pay their staff. It is gonna help them maintain the operation of their establishment. And, and so as we speak about the expansion, I would say that the, the 306 establishments 
that are currently that currently have these skill games were kind of the early adapters in this very gray area of legality. And and so then last year we we put them in the legal category. We said, okay, this is legal. And I would I would say to you if if one of your establishments is on one block is on the 800 block that, uh, that had this early adoption of this kind of gray area in our law, why shouldn't the, the establishment three blocks down be allowed at this point, since it's now regulated, we know the rules, we know the number of machines can only be four, why shouldn't they have that same opportunity would be my question. So as we look at this, you need to say, are we gonna fence people out? Is this not a free market? Or, you know, what, what's our policy on free market? I'm a free market person. I think that it's important that we make an effort to support all of our establishments that are, avail that are eligible and let them make the decision whether they want to bring these machines into their establishment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Walters, care to respond to anything? Wait, all right. Representative Neiman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was not here last year, as you very well know, when all of this discussion took place, but I did have multiple conversations with uh, my representatives and he assured me that this was gonna be kept under control and that the whole point of this was to try to rein in, to be able to uh, manage and to do a proper job of keeping this from getting out of hand and that we were gonna do this legislation and we were gonna put this together and framework this and then what was established by the good representative that brought the amendment, um, that we're, we're trying to, to, to get every, all the cattle, livestock, sheep, horses, cows, and yaks in, inside the crowd. And now as I hear, I come down here and I'm in here for myself, the realization that was pro promoted to me as well is that now you're gonna have local control in this legislation, there is the ability for counties to say whether they do or don't want that. And they can make that conscious decision. And that's representative government wise. And that's what we're about. We're about giving people choices. We're about letting them make decisions on what they do or don't want to have happen to them as a majority vote. And I understand that that is no longer an option in this amendment. And another thing we stop and think about, and we don't really realize, and I haven't heard yet either, is skills games are highly addictive, more so than games of chance. And so if you factor that into the equation, people like to do games of skill, because it's a challenge. And if you're good at it, you can win. And that's what was also presented to me in the, in the horse racing. It was a game of skill, because you had to put the time in. They were historic races where you would take the track conditions and, the, and all these different things into account, and it would increase your odds of winning. And it took a skill to do that, to go through that information, because this race actually happened and all these things, and it was nothing of a chance. It was a chance. I mean, we take your chance, but it was a game of skill. But now we're looking at trying to do exactly what we don't want to do, or for people from my part of the country don't want to do, and that is the camel's nose has been under the tent, and now we're going to go ahead and let the camel clear in the tent, and now we're going to try to manage the camel. And I was assured by my representatives that that was the whole point of all the legislation that, that you guys worked so diligently last year, guys and gals worked so diligently last year to try to contain this thing and to keep it restricted and to try to reduce it and to manage it is now it's here. So let's turn it loose because yet again, we found another revenue stream. That's not what the folks in my part of the country were sold. That's not what they were told. And it's sad whenever we have to come back here all the time and say, well, it's hard to, you know, it's here. So now we just need to take care of it. You know, and then now we're not just taking care of it. We're going to make it bigger. And we're going to take away local control. That's bad form, people. It's not good. On and against the amendment. Representative Baker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a couple points briefly before lunch. But, um, you know, again, I've, I've made this point before, but if we step back to the origin of, of, of this uh, industry, um, you know, this was really 
we're here now discussing this topic because of the unintended consequences of a bad decision by the legislature. And so the, the notion that, um, you know, this is going to solve it and we're not going to be back, I think we'll be back regardless of what we do here now. So it's good to continue the discussion. I, you know, we will continue to have these debates and we will be back, but um, let's slow it down before we just, uh, you know, open up this market again. There are unintended consequences. Representative Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Privilege of the floor. Please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the north side of the gallery. Sitting way in the back is uh, my dearest sweetheart, the first lady of House District 42, Judy Blackburn. Judy, welcome back to the house. Good to see you. Any other privileges? Back on debate? Chairman Eklund. So I'm curious what the revenue has been. Uh, we should have a, a pretty good handle on that. So I would appreciate an answer to that. Thank you. Chairman Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a second time again, and, and I promise not to talk too many more times, but uh, against the amendment. And, and I just want to push back on the idea that a free market means you can't regulate anything or that there's nothing, there's no area between zero regulation and prohibition. You know, some of us that live in town, which I do not, but they've gotten where you could have four chickens. Does that mean you have to have, be able to have 400 chickens? I don't think. You know, we allow alcohol, but we limit age. We limit where, where it's sold. Some people think that that's a bad idea. Uh, you know, should be sold with your, I almost said a product of powdered formula. I don't, I mean, obviously we regulate there. We, we say maybe you can have one house on five acres. Does that mean we should do over that? And so you can have a hundred apartment complexes on five acres. You can get in your car and drive 50 miles an hour. Well, once we authorize the car on the road, does that mean you got to let it drive 120 miles an hour? Maybe not. So I just want to, you know, before we get this idea in our head that there's, there's nothing to do other than not regulate anything or that letting 50 people do something means you have to let 5,000 people do something, that, that's not, that actually is not a true thing. Representative Error. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not here to talk about cats, but I do want to mention another animal that my good friend from House District 1 mentioned, that camel, whose nose we have blood under the tent. And this is just another step in the, and his body come in a little closer, a little more. If we legalize gambling more, we're going to have more of it. And I urge you to vote against the amendment, against the bill. Chairman Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I had a friend that had a three-legged cat and he was on the way to the dump and I was gonna drop it off at the dump. And instead, he started listening to the cat and the cat was kind of purring and pretty soon he, he turned around and he went back and he taught that cat how to sing. And then he taught the cat how to play the piano. And now that cat pays for all of his food and wages for the rest of his life. So it's just kind of a, you just never know. But what's important about this amendment is, is that the way that we left here um, two years ago was that we, we just put more or less a moratorium on, on any new um, facilities. And so what that does and what that has done is created a so select few that are operating here in, the, in our state. And, and if we draw the line and don't allow anyone else to come and we kind of freeze it where it's at, then we, we're kind of creating a semi-monopolistic kind of group and they benefit nobody else. Um, are some restrictions reasonable? Absolutely. And I don't know what the right number is, but I, I think we need to pass the amendment just uh, and modify it how you, how you wish 
but um, I, we don't want to close the door to, to those enterprises that weren't properly, weren't permitted. And you, you also all may recall that the, the Gaming Commission had some real um, issues with how they approved and denied permits in the last year after we allowed them to do it. And so there's some folks that have invested time, money, and effort, and suddenly um, will be cut off if, if we don't assist them. So uh, on in favor of the amendment. Representative Altman. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had a few questions. Um, I see that the way that the proceeds are distributed, and that would be weekly from these establishments, would be 2% to the commission, the gaming commission, 21% to the establishment, and 29% to the vendor, which leaves a 48% payout. And I also noticed that the payout um, maximum was $3,000 for these particular games. Uh, one question would be, what kind of... Um, monies go in the machines. I mean, I, I know the day of a penny and a nickel and a quarter probably are very um, much over, but I was just wondering what kind of things that would be. And then also what I was wondering about, it said that after $1 million into the gaming commission at that 2%, that then 45% would go to the county, 45% uh, to the school foundation and 10% to the gaming commission after that. So what I'm wondering is, um, what is this $1 million in the gaming commission? What, how does that work? And also then my previous question, thank you. Representative Walters, bring us home on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, try and answer a few of those questions. There's a question about revenue and I don't have all my notes in front of me, I apologize, but I can just say that the county-based revenue, uh, and, and so this would also, there's more than this that went to the cities within the counties, and then the share that went to the locals, and I have it on my desk, I just don't have it in front of me. But anyhow, in 2020, the county share alone was about 370 million, or $370,000, excuse me. Uh, and I would remind folks that, that was starting in May through the end of 2020. And as we all know, uh, there was some pretty significant restrictions on activities through uh, the early part of the year. And so uh, that, that answers that question. It is not the full value, but that was what I have, in, have part of my notes in front of me. So 370,000 went just to the counties and it went to, money went to every single county in the state. There is no county that uh, did not uh, benefit from this. Obviously, as I said, the school foundation benefited from this as well as did the cities within those counties based on that distribution that's laid out. Uh, so that answers that question. I think the bill lays out the, the distribution quite well of all revenues that come out of it, 45% to the locals, 45% to the school foundation and 10% to the gaming commission to make sure they can afford to regulate these games. And then it tips after that million dollars just so that they don't have a, an ongoing uh, account that just continues to grow. And uh, have, I think that was most of the questions. A lot of it was statements. Certainly would appreciate your support on the amendment and uh, would call for the question on the amendment and we'll get back to the bill. Question having been called on standing committee amendment number one. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. The standing committee amendment has not been adopted. Division being called. All those in favor of standing committee number one, please stand. All those opposed, please stand. Standing committee amendment has not been adopted. We have a committee of the whole amendment. 
Representative Walters. Hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, could, could we get the vote count on uh, division, uh, the last vote, please? It was uh, 22 in favor, 30 opposed. Representative Walters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to move uh, Committee of the Whole Amendment Number 1 to Senate File 56 and ask for your favorable consideration. Uh, this is really kind of something that has came up over the last year. Uh, when we passed this last year, we it was a gaming commission. We converted the Paramutual Commission to the Gaming Commission. I can say that because that's what we're discussing here. And we added uh, liaisons from the legislative branch as, as non-voting members, but liaisons. And there's been some confusion on whether those liaisons could participate in the executive sessions of the Gaming Commission meetings. And so this just clarifies that the legislative liaisons would be considered full members of that body for the purposes of executive session. They are still non-voting, but uh, would, uh, would just clarify that uh, question that's been out there. And so I would ask for favorable consideration and an I vote on this amendment. Representative Yen. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to divide the amendment. So um, division one being lines four through eight and division two being the rest of the amendment. Uh, one moment while I look through the amendment here. Division one being lines four through eight on the four amendment. Division two being the rest. Uh, chair rules the amendment is divisible. Which would you like to proceed with first? Division one, Mr. Chairman. Division one being lines four through eight. We're on the division. Representative Yen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this division is essentially a technical correction to the standing committee amendment. We voted down the standing committee amendment. Let's not pass something that is for that. So just vote down division one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question being called on the division. All those in favor of division one, of uh, committee of the whole amendment, number one, center file 56, say aye. All opposed, say no. The division has not been adopted. Division two, Representative Yen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's a good clarification, so I would vote aye on the amendment. Thank you. Question having been called on division two, Committee of the Whole Amendment number one, Senator File 56. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The division has been adopted. Back on the bill. Senator Walters. Nothing further. You heard the question having been called. Mr. Chairman, sorry. Ooh, sorry. Representative Yen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I. I, I, I know we had a lot of the discussion, but I, I, I wanted to confine my discussion to the amendment. Um, but there was a question on the rest of the bill, which is what would happen if we didn't pass the bill. So last year in ha uh, House Bill 171, which um, this one uh, repeals section one essentially, which was um, the session law part that enabled uh, regulation of skill-based amusement games. The section two and the, the rest of it did two things. It established the Wyoming Gaming Commission. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm in favor of it. And part two was that it closed the loophole that the skill-based amusement games uh, operated in the gray area before we had passed that bill. So there was an exception in our gambling statute that said bona fide skill games of skill um, are not gambling, essentially. And then we added in House Bill 171 an exception that skill-based amusement games don't fit under this gambling exemption. Uh, and so if we didn't pass Senate file 56, what would happen would be the current skill-based amusement games would no longer fall in the gray area that they were before. They'd essentially be illegal um, and then they would be removed. So I, I'm uh, not interested personally in keeping those existing games around. And so I would ask you to vote no on Senate file 56. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the bringer of the bill, we just stripped a very important section, the amendment out. Would you please explain to us your perception of where the bill is right now 
the consequences of both passing the bill and not passing the bill, please. Majority floor leaders, Summers. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I, I stand on in support of the bill. And uh, I do really, I think in our small town communities, you know, you can argue about gambling and whether it's there or whether it's not, but I think in our small communities, these, these amusement based games are, uh, are good for business there and, and I support them. So on in support of the bill. Representative Walters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to the question about the, because we didn't pass the first standing or the standing committee amendment, where do we stand? We stand uh, with the bill as it is there before you and the games that were in place as of March 17th, 2020, because that's when this bill was signed and House Enrolled Act was signed, are the only games that will be allowed in the state of Wyoming. As to whether what gets repealed with the sunset and what if, if this doesn't pass and what takes place, I'll let you read the session laws and see if you can determine what it does, because I have my own impression of what it does. I've talked to a few uh, attorneys, they have their impression of what it does. And I think uh, there's a little uh, maybe difference of various opinions as to what would take place if this bill does not, not uh, pass. I, I would go back to my original analogy is I think we would be letting the cows, jacks, sheep, and anything else that we have corralled over the last year back out. And uh, so I, if we wanna have control and regulation on this industry, I would highly encourage a, a vote in favor of this bill. Chairman Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are several people in this body who grasp this whole subject far better than I. However, I'm going to vote I on Committee of the Whole because I do wanna clear up the intersection between this bill and last year's session law and how that applies. I don't like gaming. Um, I, I did vote for the commission because I think it's important to regulate what we've got and I wanna make sure that maintains. And so, I mean, I'm perfectly happy if necessary, even to lay this back several times as going forward, just to make sure that we can parse it all out. But I think that's probably a conversation that we need to have. Representative Romero Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On and for this bill, although I do think that we need to reconsider parts and moving pieces, whether it's what the previous chairwoman chairman stated. I did go to the explanation of how these games work and just keep it under 35 seconds type of thing. Pattern recognition, memory, dexterity, and accurate execution are the pieces of a patient, skillful player can win every time if, if you got skills. And then if I could end with a comment, I do think tournament play should also include some of the classics. This is where I'm not gonna mention any names, but the ones you see that are now becoming popular when you go to your big box store, there's some cool games out there that are a little old school that are fun and the risk is minimal, but take more time. Therefore, you might only spend two or four dollars all night and have fun on and for the bill. And hopefully we can make some meaningful amendments or direct it in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Hunt. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On and in support of the bill. Um, I, folks, I think that it is critically important that we move this bill forward. We, uh, um, you know, the actions that we took in this body last year to set the groundwork and, and frame this as we have to this point um, went a long way towards establishing the rules and the regulations that this industry itself has asked for. And I think that we, we are within spitting distance here of you know hopefully making permanent what we have already established over this past year and so i i would strongly urge your support of uh, the bill um i recognize that the amendment which was just defeated was it, it it there's a lot in there and so if there's concern 
that that was biting off more than we wanted to chew, we might be able to come back with some second or third reading amendments to take that those issues that were addressed in that amendment in bite-sized pieces. But um, I, I still believe that that having been shot down, um, that it's vitally important, excuse me, that it is vitally important that we move forward with this legislation so that we can um, stabilize this industry as it has tried to get off the ground over this past year and, um, you know, put into a, a, give it a sense of permanency um, and, you know, and then let it be and, and see how it does for itself. So on and in support, thank you. Representative Warren. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I raised an opposition to the, the division or the second amendment uh, uh, of this bill. I urge the body to resist uh, the amendment and, uh, okay, I wasn't sure. I thought we were still working on the second division, but uh, I do think that we need to move this bill forward. Uh, it, I agree we've spent too much time to, to let it die. So I would urge the body to support the bill and let's uh, maybe spend a little bit more time looking at potential amends, amendments to make those repairs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chairman Flitton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I wanna commend the body for some very good debate and I wanna commend the good member of appropriations who has patiently stood up there and given some very sound reasons for his amendment or the committee's amendments rather. And um, this is a very difficult conversation for those of us who are in opposition to gambling or gaming or an expansion of, but uh, I do think it's important that we move the bill forward and I would urge your support. Thank you. Question being called. All those in favor of Chairman Nicholas's motion that Senate file that the, when the committee of the whole rises and reports to do so with a recommendation of Senate file 56 do pass. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. Senate file 56 is passed committee of the whole. Representative Floor Leader. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move the house stand in recess until 2.15. All in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed, no. The house shall stand. Oh. Committee announcements. Ch Chairman Burkhart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, committee number eight transportation will meet in 15 minutes uh, a, to discuss Senate file four airport districts and Senate file 107 transportation statutory amendments two. Let's listen to the committee announcements, please. Any other committee announcements? Chairman Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your House Appropriations will meet at 8.30 tomorrow to hear Senate File 118 and Senate File 139. And just for information purposes, the, your Joint Conference Committee for the Appropriations will meet um, at noon recess tomorrow to review the final draft of the um, budget compromise. Chairman Paxton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your committee number four education will meet tomorrow upon noon recess in E3 to continue discussing absenteeism in uh, schools. That's Senate file 68 and to consider Senate file 130 charter schools. Chairman Olson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee number one judiciary is meeting now to consider Senate file 49, deferral of criminal sentence amendments and Senate file 75, protective order amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other committee announcements? We will be recessed until 2.15.